Hey guys, it's Miss Jenkins coming back to show you some cool stuff that we're going to do today. Um, all right, so what you're looking at here, my friends, is a, um, a leaf abstract in the style of the artist, artist uh, Piet Mondrian. Um, and that's what we're going to work on today. Check it out. Doesn't it look fun? It's really cool. It's really fun to do. It's kind of addicting. Um, all right, so let's talk about our materials and then we'll get started. Okay, guys, so you need a white piece of paper. And remember, this is a recording, so you can write down the materials you need, go get the stuff you need, and then just come right back and get started. All right, white paper, you need a pencil, an eraser, you need a ruler, black Sharpie marker, um, you need either colored pencils, isn't that pretty? Or oil pastels, or markers, or watercolor paint, okay? So you've got choices with materials. It kind of depends on whatever you have at home. Okay, um, the other thing you want to go out and collect is you want to collect some leaves and then choose your favorite leaf or your favorite two leaves or if you really want to do all four leaves if you collected four it's really up to you for this drawing i used the same leaf over and over and over again but you have the option of choosing a variety of leaves so you want to be able to co co um, collect leaves that are easy to trace around so this one's a little bit flimsy so it might be a little bit harder to trace around but Ultimately, it's up to you and you can always practice tracing around them on your own. And if you don't want to trace, you don't have to trace. You can also just look at them and draw from observation if you feel um, if you feel confident. And I believe in you, so I bet you could do that. All right, so once you've chosen your leaves, I'm going to go ahead and choose this one and this one. Okay, so I'm going to use these two right here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is looking at your leaves, you'll want to lay them down in various places and trace around them. Now you should use pencil for this. I am going to use my Sharpie just so that um, you can see what I'm doing. So I'm tracing around this and it's pretty, you can go pretty quick with this as long as you are holding the area down that you're tracing and notice it's not exactly the same as the leaf I'm just using it sort of as my guide but you don't have to it doesn't need to be exactly the same okay you can just be inspired by the shape of the leaf or trace it exactly as is okay so we're still tracing tracing around notice how my finger holds down the area of the leaf that I'm trying to trace in that moment so that it um, tries to stay true with the original shape that's actually there and I'm not going to do the whole stem actually no I am I'm going to do the whole stem I do like it okay so there's number one um, I'll do a second one let's do this other leaf right here um, I'm going to overlap it a little bit and I'm going to trace around it trace around it All right, I'm gonna do another one over here. And I'm just gonna kinda go back and forth between my two leaves until I have filled up my paper, but you don't wanna fill it up to the point where there's no more white left over. Like, you wanna overlap, but you still want spaces in between your leaves as well. Um, sometimes they overlap, sometimes there's space in between. Um, it's not crowded, is what I'm saying. Okay, so tracing around this one. And guys, take your time, okay? I'm going a little bit fast because I'm recording here and there's only so much memory on my device. Um, so I can't be going super slow, but you get the idea. At this point, you can even just pause and just keep filling your paper with your leaves. And just keep going. All right. At this point, I'm going to just draw some freehand. And 
I encourage you to do the same. Back in here, back out. All right, and we'll do one more over here. And again, it's your impression of the leaf. It doesn't have to be exactly the same thing. Put one more right here. And this one is going to overlap a little bit. Or go under. Okay, so I am done with my leaves. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take my ruler and my pencil or Sharpie if you feel like you won't have to do tons of erasing and fixing. So how do you get your lines to be straight? Well, you have to line up this edge of your ruler perfectly with the edge of your paper up here. It's not about this because if you just rely on this, you think it's straight and then it's not straight. But if you put this edge right here, right on the edge of your paper up here, then you are able to get straight lines. So it's good to stand over your paper and check it before you move on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place vertical lines across my whole page going right on top of my leaves and I'm gonna space them at a variety of spaces in between my lines, okay? So what that means is here the space is a little bit bigger, here it's a little bit smaller. For my next line, I'm gonna go even more slender so the space is even smaller. Then I might go back to something wider again. And then I might go back to something more slender. And then maybe even more slender. And ultimately, it's not even a perfect pattern. If you wanna create a pattern in the way you space your lines, that's fine, but you don't have to. You can just kind of be random like Miss Jenkins is doing. Random, random, going across, a bunch of vertical lines. Um, I can't really give you a number on how many lines you need. It really depends on how you space your lines. So some of you might have more or less than mine, depending on the spacing. Okay, so I am done with my vertical vertical lines on this side. Now I'm gonna turn my paper so that it is in profile and I'm gonna do vertical lines going this way so that I end up having verticals and horizontals when I'm done. So same thing, make sure your ruler is lined up over here. I'm doing about half an inch there, maybe a full inch here, then maybe an inch and a half here. and a little bit less here so more slender on this line even more slender on this line just keeping a variety of spaces going all right almost done with our lines almost there now I'm just gonna come over here and split this last section into two pieces. All right, so do you see how there is now a variety of verticals and horizontals across our whole drawing? So that's what you wanna end up with, all right? Once you get to this point, I forgot to mention at the beginning, but you also need a skinny sharper Sharpie or a, um, a thin black pen or a thin felt tip pen you need something thin that you'll be able to make your little skinny lines with that you see here. Okay, so let's begin. Let's use our ruler and I'm just gonna do a little bit of this and then I want you to kind of continue and then come back and check on the color part. So basically you guys, if you look at this, you can see that I have a variety of areas that are separated that are made up of the skinny little stripes, okay? The lines, narrow lines. 
And then in between all of those, there's areas of color, right? So you're gonna basically hop around, okay? So if you see on this row here, I've got like one, two, three, four, five sections. The next row, there's maybe two sections of stripes. The next row, there's like one, two, three, four sections. One, two, three, four, five sections. So it's just a variety and you wanna ultimately end up with um, pockets of the stripes in various places. So uh, remember your ruler, if you wanna have nice straight lines and then I'm just spacing them. And I mean, if you wanna do this with pencil and then come back and go over it with pen, that's totally fine. But ultimately, I am going to make little stripes that go across this one little square that I'm focused on, or this one shape. It could be a square or a rectangle. And I mean, if I were to measure the space in between, it's um, one millimeter. Okay, one millimeter. Um, but you don't have to measure, you can just sort of eye it, but if you wanna be super nerdy and measure, that's fine too. By the way, when I say nerd, I mean it is a compliment. Nerds are cool. Okay, so almost done with this section. Now while I'm doing this, I am refraining from allowing my lines, my stripes, to enter into the leaves or into another section. So if you look at this, this is a shape right here where my pen is moving right now. So that would be the shape that I would insert either my color or my stripes in, but I wouldn't go beyond that. So for this section here, I'll do stripes again. I'm just gonna focus on strictly pen for a long time until I've kind of put pen, um, pen stripes all over my composition and then I will come back and work on color. All right, so you see how I didn't go into this area here, which is actually part of my leaf, and I didn't go into this area here, this little tip, this little corner there, because that's part of the rectangle beneath, right? So that is what you want to do when you're working on this. So for example, in this section here, if I'm gonna do stripes, I am going to skip over the stem and continue my stripe, sort of so it looks like the stripes are going behind the stem so there we go. And there we go. Again, don't want to go into my stem. Now guys, if you accidentally go into something, it's not a big deal. At the end of the day, if you have good craftsmanship, your artwork is going to look awesome. It doesn't have to look exactly like mine, but I will say that if you try to at least follow this concept throughout this project, your project will look stellar. Okay, so you continue doing black and white stripes everywhere that, um, you know, little pockets of it everywhere throughout your picture, okay? Making sure that no striped areas are directly next to each other or directly on top of each other. So here's one here, but beneath it, there's no stripes. Next to it, there's no stripes. Next to it, there's no stripes, okay? So stripes, no stripes, no stripes, no stripes, but then we got stripes here, but no stripes here, no stripes here, no stripes next to it. Right here, you can see that there's stripes right here. There's none next to it, none below it, but there is one here diagonal from it. So these two corners are touching and that's fine. That's fine because it's still not directly next to or directly below or directly above. So that's what you wanna do for your stripes. Go all over and have little pockets all over the place. Then you focus on your leaves, okay? So try to think about cool colors and warm colors. So cool colors here are gonna be, so I did a complimentary theme. I did orange and blue. Those are complimentary colors from the color wheel. So I did a series of sort of oranges and reds in the leaf even though I have some stripes in the leaves too, but when I started color, the leaf shape itself was primarily made up of reds and oranges, and the background sections are made up of its complement, which is blue, so a variety of blues. So you can decide what to do. You can decide that you would like to do 
um, greens and pinks or greens with reds and pinks. So I'm going to grab some colored pencils here and pick some different shades and tints of my two colors. And so now if I did my leaves with my reds and pinks, then each square within each section within the leaf that's an entire shape of its own, I would outline that section and I would fill it in. And in the same way that you hopped around, you hopped around with the striped areas, you would hop around this particular leaf with this pink that I'm holding. So I wouldn't want to do it right here or right here because that's right next to it and it's you know blocked off by this line but couldn't I do it right here yes because it's not directly next to not directly above not directly below so there we go filling this one in now I'm pushing pretty hard with my color pencils because I want my stuff to be really bright but remember you could do um, oil pastels markers or color pencils for this so could I also do it right here? Is this also part of this leaf? Yes, it is. And I'll do the pink right here again. Outline my section. Even though a tip of that little part of the leaf is in right here because it's not the same section, right? Remember the shape is the lines that surround that space. So then I'll retire that color for a little bit and I'll focus on sort of this red orange color. So outline and fill in so that my entire leaf, this leaf, always making sure that I'm checking. Okay guys, so now I have finished doing the um, this leaf with a variety of pinks and reds and I added pops of stripes in there as well. So those stripes are going to end up going um, you know throughout your picture so ultimately even when you start color you've got some of those stripes in the leaves as well so now you would focus on the background right so I would do all the leaves first with your reds and your oranges and then I would go into the background with the complement or if you were doing cool colors you would do cool colors in the background and warm in the actual leaves or the opposite of that so here we go. I'm using my green right here. That's the outline. That's the shape right there. So then I'm going to fill it in. And just like we did before, we don't want the same colors um, touching one another throughout this process. Um, so am I going to do the same exact green right next to it? Nope. In this situation, the stripes are there, so that's not going to work anyway. But could I do it right here? Yep, I can because right here is it's separated by the stripes, so it is not directly next to it. Um, can I do it right here? Yes, because again, it's separated. Can I add some right here? Yep, I can. So there I am outlining it, filling it in, and then maybe I'm going to stop and go into a different kind of green. So this like dark forest green put that right here and in here and right here and I can do it right here so this is all on the outside sort of behind the leaf okay um, I can do it right here And I'll switch now to sort of a little bit more of a lime. And I can do that right here. And I'll put it right here. So again, like here we can see three different greens all in that same area because the lines are separating those sections, which is why we want to separate the colors as well. Plus, variety is more interesting. Having a variety of shades and tints of your colors is much more interesting 
than just going right over things. I always say this to my students, what's the point of us making lines to separate designs if we just color right over them with a single color? It doesn't make very much sense, right? So our goal is to have variety, okay? Um, similar to when you guys did the Lego art last week, it was a very similar situation in where you did all these designs and then instead of filling it in with just one color, I asked you to um, you know, have different colors filling in those areas. So you can see, hopefully, what we're after here. And I'm gonna go ahead and let you um, continue working on this. And remember, the finished product, the finished artwork, the leaves are going to include a type of color, whether that's cool or oranges or reds plus stripes, and the background has to be the opposite. So it'll have stripes, but then it'll have the opposite of what you did in the leaves. So if it's the color wheel, opposite of orange is blue, so the blue would go in the back. If you do cool and warm colors, then your background could be reds, oranges, yellows, and your leaf could be blues, greens, and violets. And that is all, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this project. And please, when you're done, remember not to forget to post pictures. I love you guys. I miss you. And I can't wait to see you again soon. Okay? Take care, everybody.